hey, I heard that we were doing a geography lesson, and I love geography. It's when you travel all over, you see new places and new people, and geography is just about the coolest subject that... What was that? Geometry? Oh, dear. Um, okay, we're going to do geometry today. So if you're in here for a geography class, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. All right. So we're going to talk about geometry and transformations, the super-duper kind of transformations. To do super-duper transformations, we need a little bit of background knowledge. The background knowledge that we're going to need is the coordinate system. So let's talk a little bit about the coordinate system. The x-axis is this horizontal line that goes right across here. It's a horizontal number line. And along this x-axis, all the y values are 0. So this is the, the point. This is a special point we're going to talk about later. But if this were the point here of x being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then y would be 0. All the y values are 0 x1, y0, x2, y0, x3, y0. All of the y points along here are 0. This is our vertical number line known as the y-axis. And along this point, all the x values are 0. That would be 0, and then y is 1. x is 0, y is 2. x is 0, y is 3. And so on and so on. In the middle right here where the two number lines meet is called the origin, and that's the point zero, 0, where it's both x being 0 and y being 0. Also, when you're listing um, coordinates, you put the x value first and the y value second. It's the point, even though in this one it wouldn't matter, they're interchangeable, but the x value goes first and then the y value goes second. So that is a little bit about the coordinate system. One more part is that there are four different quadrants. In the first quadrant is anything over here where the x values are positive and the y values are also positive. In coordinate number two, the x values are negative and the y values are positive. In coordinate three, quadrant, sorry, not coordinate, ugh, quadrant three, the x values are negative and the y values are also negative. And in quadrant four, the x values are positive, but the y values are negative. So quadrant one, two, three, and four. And those are going to be important as well um, as we move into translations or transformations. We're going to do translations, reflections, using all the information that we talked about just now. So first off, we're going to do translating. We're going to move this little guy, point C, to this location. This is our xy, and we're going to translate this point to x minus 2 and y plus 2. And that means that we're going to take this point, and we're going to start by moving the x value negative 2, 1, 2, and then our y value will go up to 1, 2. And so we're going to translate this point to being up here. We call that C with the little doohickey thingy. All right, so C is our original point or our pre-image, and then C with the accent is our image. So we've translated this point. And this is the way that we would write it. This is the notation that you'll use. Say xy is translated to x minus 2, y plus 2. Let's do another one. With a triangle, we're going to translate this entire shape, this uh, triangle B, D, C. And again, we're going to translate it in this way. X gets translated to X plus 4. Y gets translated to Y plus 2. So X gets added 4 onto it. So let's say we'll start with the point C. 1, 2, 3, 4 on the X. And the Y gets translated 1, 2. So you'll have C here. And then you'll do the same with all three other points. So the entire triangle moves essentially over to the right, 4, and then up, 2. All right? And that's how we would translate this triangle. Notice the markings here. B, D, C would be our pre-image. And then with those little accents is our image. All right? So if you see a picture with just these two and they don't have the arrows, you know it started where the B, C, D is and it ended 
where we have those little accents. All right. Let's look at the reflecting. So I want you to reflect point D. Point D says, I'm confused. All right, we need something before we can reflect. How can we reflect if we don't have a something to reflect over? We need to have a reflect a line of reflection. So to make a line of reflection, we are going to do we're going to use the x axis. So the x axis is now our line of reflection, and we can mark that on here if we want. Um, I'll just put a red line there for this time, so we can kind of take a look at it. If that's our line of reflection, we're going to reflect the point three four. This is the point one, two, three, one, two, three, four, positive and positive. We're going to reflect that over the x-axis, and the x-axis is our reflecting point. Much better. Now we have our line of reflection. So we go down four to get to our reflection, so we would go down another four, and that would, again, we're marking our new point with a little accent, and the point now becomes three, negative four. You see? One, two, three, four, negative. So if we reflect over the x-axis, the y value simply changes to being negative. What happens should we have reflected over the y-axis? Well, let's go ahead and do that. We go one, two, three to get to the y-axis, so we go three more beyond the x or the y-axis, changing our x value from positive three to negative three. You see? So again, the original point here, or the pre-image, the new image, and that's what we do. So if you reflect over the x-axis, you change your y value. If you reflect over the y-axis, you change the value of the x, the x value, positive to negative. All right. And that's it. That's um, some basic transformations and some information you needed to know. Remember those points about the um, about coordinate planes and quadrants, and also about reflections and translations on a coordinate plane. Hope this lesson's been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.